All right, so I want you to imagine you're working at this company and this right here is your database. So you got order ID, customer ID, date, status, the amount of money that you're making and region right here. And it's not just these 10 rows, it's actually 10,000 total orders. It's a much bigger database. Now, if you've been following along with the channel for a while, you know that we actually built this with the Postgres MCP and the Docker MCP in cursor, and this is a live working database. Now, let's say I wanna run this command right here. Select, the star means all, so all columns, from orders where customer ID equals 339. So we can see there's no 339 here, but there's 10,000 rows, so we wanna find that. I can also say, tell me how much time this takes. We can run this and cursor is gonna go ahead and execute this query. And you can see the query execution time was about 0.937 milliseconds. And the query returned seven orders for customer ID 339. Now this time I'm gonna create an index and run the exact same query but our results now are massively different. Now in this query, it also returned seven rows matching customer ID three through nine. However, the time it took to do that is drastically different. So before the index, it took about 1.7 milliseconds. And after it took about 0.26 milliseconds, 6.5 times improvement. This was a database with 10,000 rows. You can have databases with millions of rows and that improvement may be even bigger. So in this video, we're gonna cover indexing and how you can get this to work for you too. Something important to understand right off the bat is that this table right here with 10,000 different rows isn't actually stored as individual rows in PostgreSQL. It is stored in what we call blocks. Now each block is about eight kilobytes worth of data. So block one may have stuff like order one with customer 66, it was canceled, it was $213 worth. And in total, there's 120 different orders in this block because it is worth eight kilobytes worth of data. And that's the same for block two, same for block three, and it's gonna be the same for block N. Now I want you to notice something. The orders here are in order, but look at the customers, right? You got customer 1166 is order number one, customer 331 is order number two, but customer 331, if you notice, is actually in block two as well. And the reason this happens is because orders are stored in the order that they happen. So order one came first, then order two, then order three, so on, so on. But customer 331, they placed an order early on, which went into block one. But then later on, they actually placed another order, which is in block two. And they could have an order in block three, they could have an order in block 175. So customers could be scattered across multiple blocks. So if we wanna run a command like this, select all from orders where customer ID equals 331, like we just did before, before, then PostgreSQL doesn't just stop when it finds order 331. It reads not only this whole block of data right here, it'll read block two and block three and block 100. It has to read the entire block. It has to read all of them because customer 331 could be order number two, which we've seen right here, but they also pop up again in block number two. So PostgreSQL has to go through all of these blocks to actually get the final result. And we call this a sequential scan. It has to go through every single one of these blocks in order. And you might hear this be called O of N. And it's basically saying as your data grows, the number of blocks also grow and therefore the time to sequentially scan through all of them increases as well. And this gets very expensive. All right, so here's why that is expensive. And I think a good example here is using Apple because Apple is super expensive. So you know when you buy a computer and you have this memory section here and you have this storage section here. Now memory is your RAM and that is physical chips on your motherboard. So that is your working space. When you open up an app, it loads it into RAM and it is very fast. Meanwhile, storage is your disk. So this is your SSD or a separate physical drive. That is where all your files live permanently. So your photos, your documents, your database, and this is slow. Now the thing is Postgres can't work directly from storage. It has to load the blocks from storage into memory first. So when we run this query for the first time, things go from storage to memory. The so block one, Postgres loads it from storage to memory. Block two, block three, and all the way to block 100. Each block might take, let's say 10 milliseconds, but that adds up when there's a lot of data. This is only 10,000 rows, but like I said, it could be millions of rows. Now, once it's in memory, it is a lot faster to scan, but the bottleneck here is that we have to load those 83 blocks from storage into memory. And then Postgres has to go ahead and read sequentially all of those blocks. So this is where indexes come in. Now let's go back to our table and let's see how an index fixes it. So you can see our table here, we've got the order ID, customer ID, everything as we know 
number four, and this is sorted by order ID. However, customer ID here is in a random order based on when a customer actually placed the order. Now on the left hand side here, we actually have a customer ID index. Now this is a sorted list of the customer IDs. So you can see it goes from seven to 26 to 164, and they actually could be thousands in here. Now this index needs to have two things here, a customer ID and also the block location. So we can see here that customer ID seven is stored in block four. Likewise, if I search up customer three through one, they are stored in blocks one, two, and nine. Then it goes directly to those blocks and finds them. But obviously there's a problem here, right? Like what if we had thousands of customer IDs, then we're not really solving the initial problem that we had. We would have to scan through top to bottom to actually find customer three through one. And this is where tree indexes come into place. Now the index, what we looked at before, is actually stored in blocks as well, but they're not the same blocks as the orders that we saw before. They're index blocks. And these index blocks are arranged in this tree type shape right here. So let me show you how this works. So let's say we're searching again for the elusive customer 331. And I want you to assume in our table, we have 2000 people just to make it simple. Now at the top right here, the root, I know it's a little confusing because roots normally at the bottom, but it's at the top. This is one index block. And this is asking, is the customer ID less than 1000? So half the number of our total table. So think about this, we have 2000 customers, right? And this question eliminates half of them. Three through one is less than 1000. So then we go to the left hand side, right? And we've only read one index block at this point. In the next branch we read, is customer ID less than 500? Well, again, three through one is less than 500. So we can eliminate all all of this right here and we only read this branch right here. So so at first I eliminated a thousand customers and then I just eliminated an extra 500. Then we do it again. So is 331 less than 250? No, it isn't. So now I know where our customer is and it's also gonna tell us where our blocks are. So let's say these are blocks one and two. So that's one, two, three, four and then five and six blocks to read. So four index blocks plus the two extra blocks that we need to read of data. Compare that to the 83 or hundreds of blocks that we had to read before. It can be 10 times faster, it can be 20 times faster, it can be 100 times faster depending on the size of our data set. So that's why a B tree index is so quick because at each level, the tree eliminates half of the search space. Now, B tree indexes are known as O of log N. They're logarithmic growth. So at 10,000 rows, we read three blocks. 100,000, we read four blocks. 10 times the data, but only one extra level. And this is because each extra search cuts the space in half. So this is why it handles large inputs of data really well. And the growth of the time to search actually slows down drastically. Okay, so let's try this in cursor. How would you do this in a real database? So what we can do, go ahead and do is run this command explain analyze. And even if you don't know what this means within a platform like cursor, it's gonna be able to run these commands and also explain it for you. So if you are in doubt, what I'd recommend saying is explain to me in depth what is going on here and what is happening. So then when we run this command, what we're doing is running that same thing as before, select all from orders where customer ID equals three through one. And we can see the total time to run the query was 1.122 seconds. It's telling us about that sequential scan. It's going through the entire table here. Postgres reads all 10,000 rows and checks each one. Also estimates the cost. So it tells us how many orders customer three through one actually had, which is three. And it also tells us when this becomes a problem. So when we have more than 100,000 rows, we can see this adding a lot of time and cost. So here we can ask Cursor to audit our database and recommend different indexes or things to help us with our performance and explain it. Go through an audit database setup, recommend indexes that you think would be useful and also explain what you are doing and why. We can go ahead and press enter there and Cursor is gonna go and audit our database. So you can see it's still running here, but it actually went ahead and created this entire audit report from our database. And just in the exec summary, it says that we have zero zero indexes across all tables. And this is a critical performance issue that will severely impact query performance as our data grows. All queries are currently performing sequential scans, which is insufficient and will not scale. So here you can see that it created 12 indexes in total and the performance impact is it's gonna be a lot faster. Let's go ahead and run the exact same query and I'm gonna say compare it to before we had the indexes and let's have a look at the difference in performance. You can see about a 24 times improvement in the execution time, 3.4 times improvement on the planning time. Previously, obviously we used a sequential lookup. Now we're using an index lookup. Three rows examined versus 10,000 and obviously we're gonna have lower cost associated with that as well. Now, before you go ahead and just index everything, you need to be careful. Now, the reason we wanna do that is because every write must update 
all the indexes. So if you just create more and more index tables, that's gonna cost more money. It's more data that you have to store. If we look at some of the reasons here, more indexes equals more work per write. So inserts and updates are gonna get slower. Indexes can make tables two to three times larger. Of course, there's a lot of duplicate data. So storage and bloat can really balloon really fast. Too many options equals a slow planner. So the query planner has too many choices and it can pick a worse plan to actually execute. So indexes eat RAM before table data, so it's more disk and slower queries. As a rule of thumb, index what you actually query, and you can kind of simulate this out as we did in Cursor before as well. If this is interesting to you, I'd recommend checking out our project where we go step by step on this, and we're actually gonna show you how to build this database in Cursor with the Postgres MCP and the Docker MCP. And then you go in depth and add more detail as well. Plus at the end, you get documentation that you can then show to recruiters, share to your LinkedIn, your GitHub, other platforms. We make it super easy to do it because as you go through your project, you just fill in these questions, add your screenshots and you get proof to actually show to employers. If you enjoy this video, leave a like, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.